magic wood We're in the secret kindergarten The world's best show for kids is starting The secret kindergarten radio show Use your ears and your imagination We're going to play, we're having fun Back to the Secret Kindergarten here on Revolution Radio. I'm your host Gino, as in G. No, because that's the magic word. No, and I don't like it when grown-ups tell me what to do. We're going to do an activity. Can you guess that sound? Put your listening ears on. This is actually really hard, but I know you can do it. Okay, here we go. Here's the first sound. Can you guess this sound? Let's try it. Are you ready? that sound well done that's right it was a lion it was a roaring lion and roaring lions they are strong and they give us strength I love lions okay here's the next one are you ready that's a tricky one Every time I hear that sound, all the way down here, the bottom of the world in New Zealand, when I first hear it, I think, what is that? Let's try it again. Okay, one more time. It's a peacock. That's a peacock. Oh. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, what's the sound? You tell me. Ooh. I feel a little bit cold and shivery. I feel like snuggling up in bed. Can you tell me what that was? What was it? That's right. That was the sound of... Thunder! Okay, let's go to the next one. You ready? <laughs> One more time. Now I'll tell you something. That was in Australia. And that was a very naughty bird. Very naughty. Do you know which bird it was? It was a... What's that? It was a cockatoo. A cockatoo. 
okay. We got one more, okay? This is a tricky one. Let's have a listen. I'll tell you, we're underwater. Now, does that sound like a fishy, like a little fish? Sounds like something really big, like really big. Isn't that weird? Okay, what do you think that was? It's underwater. That was, can I tell you? That was a humpback whale. Have you ever been in, have you ever gone swimming in the sea? was probably over in America getting too cold to do that. But I hope one day soon you get to go with your mummy and daddy to the sea and you get to put your head a little bit under the water and you get to listen to the sounds in the ocean. I used to do that a lot when I was a kid and that's why I'm so crazy now. Let's hear a story. This one is about Wolves. And wolves are very strong too. They're quite scary, like lions. This story is called How Manabozo is Changed into a Wolf. Manabozo is Changed into a Wolf. Adapted from H.R. Schoolcraft. One evening, as Manabozo was walking along the shore of a great lake, weary and hungry, he met a great magician in the form of an old wolf, with six young ones coming toward him. The wolf no sooner caught sight of him than he told his whelps, who were close beside him, to keep out of the way of Manaboso. For I know, he said, that it is that mischievous fellow whom we see yonder. The young wolves were in the act of running off when Manaboso cried out, my grandchildren, where are you going? Stop, and I will go with you. I wish to have a little chat with your excellent father. Saying which, he advanced and greeted the old wolf, expressing himself as delighted at seeing him looking so well. Whither do you journey? he asked. We are looking for a good hunting ground to pass the winter, the old wolf answered. What brings you here? I was looking for you, said Manaboso, for I have a passion for the chase, brother. I always admired your family. Are you willing to change me into a wolf? The wolf gave him a favorable answer, and he was forthwith changed into a wolf. Well, that will do, said Manaboso, but he said, looking at his tail. Could you oblige me by making my tail a little longer and more bushy? Just a little more bushy? Certainly, said the old wolf, 
and he straightway gave Manoboso such a length and spread of tail that it was continually getting between his legs, and it was so heavy that it was as much as he could do to carry it. But, having asked for it, he was ashamed to say a word, and they all started off in company dashing up the ravine. After getting into the woods for some distance, they ran across the tracks of moose. The young ones scampered off in pursuit, the old wolf and Manoboso following at their leisure. Well, said the old wolf, by way of starting the conversation, who do you think is the fastest of the boys? Can you tell by the jumps they take? Why, he replied, that one that takes such long jumps, he is surely the fastest. Ha ha, you are mistaken, said the old wolf. He makes a good start, but he will be the first to tire out. This one, who appears to be behind, will be the one to kill the game. By this time they had come to the spot where the boys had started in chase. One had dropped what seemed to be a small medicine sack, which he carried for the use of the hunting party. Take that, Manabozo, said the old wolf. Why, what will I do with a dirty dogskin? The old wolf took it up. It was a beautiful robe. Oh, I will carry it now, cried Manaboso. Oh, no, said the wolf, who had used his magical powers. It is a robe of pearls. Come along. And away he sped, at a great rate of speed. Not so fast, called Manaboso after him. And then he added to himself, as he panted after, Oh, this tail! Coming to a place where the moose had lain down, they saw that the young wolves had made a fresh start after their prey. Why, said the old wolf, this moose is thin. I know by the tracks. I can always tell whether they are fat or not. A little farther on, one of the young wolves, in dashing at the moose, had broken a tooth on a tree. Manaboso, said the old wolf. One of your grandchildren has shot at the game. Take his arrow. There it is. No, replied Manaboso. What will I do with a dirty dog's tooth? The old wolf took it up, and behold, it was a beautiful silver arrow. When they at last overtook them, they found that the youngsters had killed a very fat moose. Manaboso was very hungry. But the old wolf just then again exerted his magical powers, and Manaboso saw nothing but the bones picked quite clean. He thought to himself, Just as I expected, dirty, greedy fellows. If it had not been for this log at my back, I should have been in time to have got a mouthful. And he cursed the bushy tail which he carried to the bottom of his heart. The old wolf finally called out to one of the young ones, Give some meat to your grandfather. One of them obeyed, and coming near to Manaboso, he presented him the end of his own bushy tail, which was now nicely seasoned with burrs gathered in the course of the hunt. Manaboso jumped up and called out, You dog! Do you think I am going to eat you? And he walked off in anger. Come back, brother, cried the wolf. You are losing your eyes. You do the child injustice. Look there. And, behold, a heap of fresh meat was lying on the spot all prepared. Manaboso turned back, and at the sight of so much good food, put on a smiling face. Wonderful, he said. How fine the meat is. Yes, replied the old wolf. It is always so with us. We know our work, and we always get the best. It is not a long tail that makes the hunter. Manaboso bit his lip. All right, let's hear a little song by Nancy Stewart from nancymusic.com. This is called Let's Go to the Market. Let's 
go to the market, let's go to the store. We can buy a loaf of bread and maybe a few things more. Let's go to the market, let's go to the store. We can buy some broccoli and maybe a few things more. Let's go to the market, let's go to the store. We can buy some cereal and maybe a few things more. Let's go to the market, let's go to the store. We can buy some bananas and maybe a few things more. Let's go to the market, let's go to the store. We can buy some orange juice and maybe a few things more. Hey, what's your favorite cereal? <laughs> when I was a kid, an actual kid, <laughs> my favorite was, of course, that was Cocoa Pops. I was like a wolf with Cocoa Pops. Arr! Fly, little bird, across the mountains, fly out over the sea. Come home, little bird, you must be tired, and I have food for thee. Fly, little bird, across the mountains, fly out over the sea. Come home, little bird, you must be tired, and I have food for thee. Fly, little bird. The mountains fly out over the sea. Come home, little bird, you must be tired, and I have food for thee. Fly, little bird, across the mountains, fly out over the sea. Come home, little bird, you must be tired, and I have food for thee. One day you simply went too far 
When you exploded in space, no, you imploded in space. Now a black hole is what you are. Black hole, your gravity's irresistible. Black hole, better stay away from you. Black hole, you even steal the light. You're a mighty awesome thing, black hole. You're a mighty awesome thing, black hole. You're a mighty awesome thing, black hole. everybody <laughs> get moving okay and when the music stops you gotta freeze you know how to do it oh it's the freeze game oh yeah oh got you here we go Are you moving? Are you shaking? When's the freeze gonna come? You never know when it's gonna come. Oh! Well, this music's like a flashback. Are you moving? Are you shaking? Are you dancing? Get ready to freeze. You can't get ready, because you never know when it's going to come. Oh! Come on, shake it all out. Shake those hands. Wave 
wave those arms like a crazy person. Luckily, no one can see me. Because I'm a crazy guy. When's the freeze coming? You don't know. You don't know. Oh, did I get you? I saw some of you still moving out there. It's always good to get moving. Even if you're sitting in a chair, just move your arms. And look out for the freeze. Oh, that wasn't a freeze. Oh, I got you. I got you. You got to dance like no one's watching. And in my case, nobody is watching. <laughs> Are you ready to freeze? Oh, it's not there. There's no more freezes coming. Oh. All right. It's a secret kindergarten. Remember, I love you. <laughs> 